Thank you. And that will be call room one, correct? That's uh, correct. Jail call. Yes, BRC one. Thank you. Just a moment, Your Honor. There's a little problem with the connection. Just sure. a second. Just take it longer than usual. It shows on the screen that it's ringing. <laughs> Connected, Your Honor. Great. Sir, good morning. Please tell me your name. Mario Escobar. Mario Escobar. Sir, you are here in case number 20MM6355. You were arrested for battery domestic violence. There's probable cause. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Is there a witness here for Mr. Escobar? No, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Bush. Sir, you are not to have any contact with the victim. You are to maintain a separate residence. You are not to possess any weapons or firearms. You may have a one-time return with the police to get your things if needed. Do you have any questions about the no contact order? No, the problem I have is that I would like to put her a no, what I would like to do is file an injunction against her so she doesn't get near my house. Okay, so you'll need to do that down at the clerk's office at the downtown courthouse when you're released from the jail. But do you have any questions about the no contact order? No, that was it. All right, sir. Thank you. I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time. Okay. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Morrison. Morning, Judge. Is your client, does your client need a Spanish interpreter? He does not, Judge. Okay. Let me finish with the interpreter cases, and then we'll go ahead and take care of your case. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Good morning, sir. Tell me your name, please. Jose Martinez Diaz. Jose Martinez Diaz. This is case number 20 CT 5396. You were arrested for no valid driver's license. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Ms. Bush, do you have an offer for Mr. Martinez? Yes, Your Honor. If he wants to plea it's a withhold of adjudication two days orange county jail two days credit time served don't drive without a valid driver's license and court costs uh he has no discernible criminal history 
Okay. Mr. Martinez, did you want to accept the offer from the state attorney? I don't have a second case for Mr. Martinez. I don't have a second case either. There's a hold, federal hold. Yeah, he's saying That's that. All. It's all right, so sir, your bond is $500. You're not to drive without identity. a valid driver's license. Thank you. these other two that were pulled up here I have um, Ralphie Quiles Colazo is that a Spanish case okay and then this one is Portuguese okay thank you mr. interpreter that's all we have you're very welcome your honor and then Dexter could you pull um, Jose Ibarra thank you no problem mr. Morrison sure. yes I apologize for my lateness. I was waiting for you over in courtroom two, I think, for some oh, reason. Oh, no problem. Let me just, um, Maybe just want the, the play that I find judge, uh, Epperson had sent me last week. The costs are different in Osceola County than they are here in Orange County. It would make sense. Um, so I need to make sure that I have the right cost for the minute. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Tell me your name, please. Jose Antonio Barra, Jr. All right. Mr. Barra, you were here present with your attorney this morning. Could you please place your um, appearance on the record? Michael Morrison on behalf of Mr. Barra. All right. And these are case numbers 20CT1526 and 20CT1525, and this is a change of plea. Mr. Morrison, were these negotiated with the state? Yes, they signed by Ms. Uh, Bush. Ms. Bush. Bush. <laughs> Got it. Okay. 
Um, Mr. Ibarra, at this time, do you want to withdraw your previously entered plea of not guilty and enter a plea of no contest? Yes. Did you have an opportunity to read the plea forms with your lawyer? Yes, I did. Was he able to answer all of your questions? Yes, he did. Uh, do you understand all the constitutional rights that you'll be giving up today? Yes, I do. Uh, are you on probation? No, I'm not. Do you understand that if you are not a U.S. citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yeah. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that no, would I affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No, I have not taken any. All right, sir. Um, as to case number 20, CT1505, that is for the offense of driving under the influence. The um, agreement is an adjudication of guilt, 12 months of probation, 50 hours of community service, a 12-month driver's license suspension, the level one DUI counterattack school. There's a 10-day impound on the vehicle, the victim awareness panel, $500 fine. Uh, cost of investigation is that, what to agency is that to Mr. Morrison? Question, Judge. I think it was pulled over by the sheriff's office. Osceola County? Yes, Judge. Next time they inquire, my client. Sure. I'm pretty sure it was uh, a. Yes, Mr. Sheriff's Mr. Office. Judge. It was Mr. the DUI Morrison. enforcement. I'll, I'll, you want to just verify, Ms. Bush? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. You'll have to pay the cost of investigation to the arresting agency. Mm -hmm. And then in 20 CT 1506, you're, um, it's for driving while license suspended. The agreement is an adjudication of guilt, 25 days in jail along with court costs. How many days credit does Ms. Ibarra have? 28 days. 28, so I'll sentence you to 28 days with credit for 20. Is that your understanding, Mr. Ibarra, of the agreement? Yes. Okay, so at this time, I will accept your plea. In 20 CT 1505, I will adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to 12 months of probation, which will include 50 hours of alternative community service, a 12 month driver's license suspension. You'll need to complete the DUI counterattack school level one. There'll be a 10 day impound on the vehicle. You have to complete the victim awareness panel, pay a $500 fine, $124 cost of investigation. And I'll let Ms. Bush fill that in in a moment. And then in 20 CT 1506, I will accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to 28 days in jail. You have credit for 28 days time served and you'll also have to pay court costs in that matter. You do have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. You will need to contact probation within 24 hours of your release from the jail and they'll be able to tell you how you're to report during this time. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Morrison? No, good. Okay. Thank you. And Thank your you. honor, it is. Oh, how many days does he have on the DUI? We'll have to fix the probation. They're both 28 days. How many? They're both 28, 28 days. So 365 minus 28 is. So it'll be 237 days of supervised probation because they'll be sentenced to 28 days and Orange County Jail is 28 days credit time served. Thank you. Okay. And it's confirmed it's Osceola Sheriff's Office. And it is Office. the Osceola County Sheriff's Office. How many days? 28 days. Oh, how many days of probation? Yeah. 237 days of probation. And then the court costs on the DUI, the CT1505, is $798. Uh, no, because, no, no, because this, that's the fine. This is in addition to the fine. The 798 is his actual court cost. So that would go here. Yeah, and then your total would be whatever. The 500 plus the 798. This was a new case. No, he'll need prints. Yeah. 798 plus 1298 is the total cost on that one. And then on the other one, his costs are 273. You're going to put that there. He also needs to put the cost of investigation. It's 124, so that's not correct either. Ms. Bush, do you have the affidavit for the cost of investigation or the order that I need to sign? I will check.
that's all. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Judge. Okay, This needs to be fucked up. So I'll go all the way up to 237. No, that's not necessarily. It's not modified because it's he can only legally be sentenced to that. So we'll have to redo this one. That's okay. Yeah. We'll just redo it after court. That's fine. Okay. In your honor, I will have to generate one. I don't see one here. Okay. I just I added it next to the cost section on the disposition. I don't know if that will be sufficient or not. So okay. just to be safe, I'd rather just have a separate order for the cost of investigation. I will. Okay. All right. Just... Have we called Portuguese yet? We're calling now. Sure, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Dexter. All right, and there's the plate phone. Is there a witness here for Cassia Vieira? Yes, Your Honor, there is. Okay, they'll need to come forward. And my understanding is that the victim does not need an interpreter. Does not. Does not. Good morning. Good morning. Tell me your name. Nelson Cardoso. All right, sir. We're just waiting for the Portuguese interpreter. Brazilian? Yes. Yes. Good morning. Is the interpreter on the line? Yes, my name is John. I'm here to help you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. I'm going to call the case. This is case number 20MM6341. Could you please ask the defendant her name? Uh, qual é o seu nome, por favor? Cássia da Silva Vieira. Cássia da Silva Vieira. Ma'am, you were arrested for domestic violence battery. Você foi é, presa porque cometeu violência doméstica. Supostamente sim. 
Yes. There is probable cause, and I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Existe causa provável, então eu vou apontar um advogado público para te defender. Then this is directed to the witness, and Mr. Interpreter, I don't need you to interpret for the um, the victim, but you'll need to interpret his responses to my questions for um, Ms. Vieira. Good okay. morning, sir. Good morning. You're Mr. Cardoza? Yes. Sir, do you want to have contact with Ms. Vieira? Yeah, I don't see no problem, Your Honor. I just think she lost her temper. She's a great mom, you know what I mean? Okay, I'll stop I don't you there. Think I'll she's just violent. stop you there, just one second, okay? Mr. Interpreter, could you interpret okay. that for uh, the defendant? Sure. É, eu, é, a juíza perguntou se é, o senhor Cardoso não queria ter contato com você e ele falou que não vê nenhum problema com isso, que você é uma boa mãe e apenas perdeu o seu uh, controle. Sir, do you have any concerns about your safety or your children's safety if I were to allow contact between the two of you? No, Your Honor. We okay. never have that kind of issues. Like I said, I think she just lost her temper. You know what I mean? Sure. She's do you live together? Mom. Excuse me? Do you live together? Yes. Okay. And we got two kids together. All right. Ms. Bush, do you have any questions for the witness? Uh, Your Honor, do you want me to interpret what you said and him, he said? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, okay. okay. Então, a juíza perguntou se ele, é, se o seu Cardoso se preocupa com a segurança dele e das crianças e ele falou que não. Mais uma vez, ele falou que você é uma boa mãe que apenas perdeu o seu controle e a sua paciência. Mr. Cardoso, yes. uh, how long have you been married to Ms. Vieira? Twelve years. And over the course of those twelve years, have there been any other instances of physical violence? No, ma'am. That's the first time. And if something like this were to happen again, would you feel comfortable calling law enforcement? Yes, no, definitely. There's no doubt. It. I was not mean call. I was hurt. She's the one called. Do you have any concerns about the safety of your two children? No, ma'am. Like I said, she's a great mom, you know what I mean? And she takes care of the kids. We never have that kind of problem. That was the first time. All right. Thank Argument you, happened like, you know, normal couple, but not like that. Thank you, sir. I have no further questions. No problem. No questions from the defense, Your And Mr. Interpreter, this yeah. is... Go ahead. Uh, sure. O juiz perguntou se... Quantos anos vocês estão casados? O seu Cardoza falou 12 anos. Ela perguntou se foi a primeira vez que aconteceu esse tipo de problema. Ele falou que sim. É, ela perguntou se a próxima vez se acontecer outra coisa assim, ele vai chamar a polícia. Ele falou que sim. E ele falou que você que chamou a polícia, que foi a primeira vez, que casais brigam e ele acha que está é, tudo bem. <coughs> Ma'am, you are not to have any hostile contact with your husband. Do you understand what that means? É, você não pode ter nenhum contato hostil com o seu marido. Você sabe o que isso significa? Sim. Yes. You are not to possess any weapons or firearms. Você não pode ter nenhuma arma ou arma de fogo. Eu não tenho nada disso. I don't have any of that. Okay. I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time. Eu vou então deixar você ser liberada eh, para o pretrial. Do you have any questions about anything that I've ordered? O que seria o pretrial? Pretrial. What, what's pretrial, Your Honor? You're going to be supervised by a pretrial release officer while you're in the community waiting for your case to go to court. Você vai ser supervisionada por um oficial é, do pretrial até que você tenha o seu julgamento. Okay. okay. Thank okay. you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. 
No problem. Thank you, Honor. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Interpreter. That's all we have. You're on. Okay, Your Honor, thanks for using our services. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. CF10464. Mr. Matos, I will appoint your office to represent him. Would you like to wait his appearance? Yes, Your Honor. He was arrested for possession of ecstasy, tampering with physical evidence, aggravated assault on a law enforcement officer with a deadly weapon, and resisting officer without with violence with a weapon. There is probable cause. He's not to possess any controlled substances without a valid prescription. He's not to possess any weapons or firearms. Bond on count one will be 150, bond on count two, 150, bond on count three, 2,500, bond on count four, $150. Good morning, your name? Shania Britton. Ms. Britton, you were arrested in case number 20 CF 10513. For aggravated assault with a deadly weapon without intent to kill two counts, there is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to have any contact with the victims. You are to maintain a separate residence. You may return. Are these witnesses for this case? No? Okay. No. Okay. No, you're wrong. Um, you are uh, not to have any contact with the victims. You're to maintain a separate residence. You may return one time with the police to get your things if needed. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. Can you please tell me who's the victims? Because it doesn't say in the report. It's uh, Ronisha Akers. Mm -hmm. And then I talked to um, the pretrial people downstairs. They told me, because I asked, is it a way I can do like a lie detector test? Because everything so in the report. That's something you'll definitely need to talk with your lawyer about, okay? I'm not saying what's, whether or not anything in this police report is true. I'm just telling you what you were arrested for mm -hmm. and setting your conditions of release. And your bond on count one is 1,500. Your bond on count two is 150. Is there a way that I can do any, like, work release or anything? Because I don't have anybody that can help get me out or PTR or something. I don't see why you didn't. Well, they weren't able to verify any of your community ties or your contacts. Do you have anybody here in the community? No, no. No. Where Only, are you going to stay when you're released? I have my own apartment, so okay. I don't stay with my sister down. All right. Where do you work? I work, I just started at the, um, the soccer stadium downtown. What are you doing there? Clean. All right, Ms. Britton, I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time. Make sure you get in contact with your lawyer upon your release, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, your name? Ryan Bertula. Sir, you are here in case number 20 CF 10512. You were arrested for aggravated battery on a pregnant person and resisting officer without violence. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond on count one is going to be $2,500. Your bond on count two will be $100. You're not to have any contact with the victim. You're to maintain a separate residence. You may return one time with the police to get your things. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. Do you have any questions about the no contact order? Oh, no. Just a second, sir. You have a case that you're out on bond for. Ms. Bush, are you in a position to make a, um, a an offer on the driving while license suspended case? I'm looking at his driving record. His last 
conviction for driving while license suspended was in 2009. Your Honor, if I may have just a moment. And his suspensions are for failure to pay court costs. Uh, in in an 893. Out of no. <laughs> Judge, um, he has judgment. I, I guess the judge signed a note moving his ticket out of connections, and he has a payment plan of thirty dollars a month. Since I can't was. hear you. He, I guess the judge moved his ticket out of collections and has a payment plan to pay every, uh, thirty dollars every month. So he has a pending case though. For it. He's out on PTR. No, yeah, that's the case I'm talking about. He has already a payment plan on it, so I don't know if he would like to resolve. I mean, I can ask him for them. Mr. Marcus, I don't know what you're referring to. I don't understand what you're trying to tell me. Oh, um, but Batarla? Sorry if I make, uh, mixed up your name. Uh, I'm guessing you just, your attorney talked to, to the judge. Is that what happened? Uh, How did this payment plan, because it's supposed to start today. Today, the 1st of September, yes. I'm uh, supposed to make $30 a month. Uh, yeah, Your Honor. So, uh, uh, Judge moved that out of collections, and now he just has a payment plan to solve that case. That's what your attorney. I, I mean, or I didn't have, did have an attorney, but yeah. Your Honor, I'm wondering if that's a citation that might have mm -hmm. come along with that. I'm not certain if there was another TR just, case. Right. No, this is a pending case. He hasn't pled on it. 20 CT 433 AW. It's a pending driving while license suspended case. Yes, and it's based on the payment of his of, of some fees, correct? No. No. He's oh. asked other cases to be taken out of collections and he's paying on those so he can try to get a driver's license. Okay, okay. Understood. Um, Dennis, if he wants to take a plea, he can't. Your Honor, the state's offer would be just making sure that nobody made an offer in the division. Mr. Butrilla, did you want to resolve that case today? Uh, if possible, yes. Do you understand that driving a license suspended is an enhanceable offense? If you get three within five years, you'll lose your ability to get a driver's license for five years. Okay. I apologize, Your Honor. It's all right. My system keeps wanting to go back to Osceola's records. The offer would be an adjudication of guilt, credit time served, do not drive without a valid driver's license. All right. Sir, did you want to take the offer? Uh, can I just ask one question? Sure. With my case that's still open, that I'm making payments on, would... So those aren't really cases. They're, that's they're, like they're ticket? old tickets okay. where the judge has t taken all of your tickets put and put them into a one big, like, Clump, okay. I guess, for lack of a better word, and you're paying down all of the court costs and fines that were associated with those tickets. Okay. So this is that's not a criminal Completely, offense. Okay. That's just you paying off the court costs and the fines in order to be able to reinstate your license. This is a criminal offense for driving while license suspended. So they're they're separate. Okay. Does that I make sense? I just wanted to make sure if they didn't. No, so this will be over, but what will happen, and while you'll want to contact the clerk or your lawyer, is because as a result of this case, you're going to have new court More, costs okay. that are going to be assessed, and if you don't pay those, that's going to be another suspension on your driver's license. So you're going to want to see if you can get them all put together and just continue to pay them off. Okay. Okay? Yeah, I would like to accept the plea. Okay. Are you on probation, sir? Uh, no, just the pre-trial for that case. Correct, and that'll be over today. Okay. Um, did you read the plea form before court? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving up? No, ma'am. Are you, I asked you if you're on probation. 
Do you understand if you're not a U.S. citizen that this plea will result in your deportation? Yes, ma'am. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, no. or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No, ma'am. All right, I'll accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to, looks like he had 29, 30 days? 35. 35? 35 days in jail with credit for 35 days time served. You will have to pay court costs. Those will be due by September 1st of 2021. Again, just see if you can get those added into the payment plan that you're already on. Okay. And you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court writing, okay. sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Your name? Desiree Clayton. Ms. Clayton, you're here in 20 CF 10519. You were arrested for aggravated battery on a pregnant person. There's probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to have any contact with the victim. You are to maintain a separate residence. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. Do you have any questions about anything that I've ordered? So, um, that's my daughter. I'm the owner of the house. So how we're going to do that? Would she be removed or would I be removed? It would be you. If she's there, I can't make her leave. So if okay. she's there, you cannot be there. If she's not, then you can. Okay. Okay. Um, I will order that you can have a one-time return with the police to get your things if needed. I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Good morning. Your name? Uh, Cody Haynes. Mr. Haynes, this is 20 CF 10482. You were arrested for battery by strangulation, domestic violence, and criminal mischief. This was pursuant to a probable cause warrant. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to have any contact with the victim. You're to maintain a separate residence. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. Mr. Haynes, how long have you lived here in the Central Florida area? My whole life. And were you currently employed? No, ma'am. You're not employed at this time? No, ma'am. Do you have any family in the area? Yes. Who's here? Uh, my grandmother and mother. Do you live with them? I live with my grandmother. Okay. Can I place Mr. Haynes on pretrial release? Yes. Okay. Mr. Haynes, I'm going to play. Or yeah, Mr. Haynes, I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time, sir. Okay. Do you have any questions about anything that I've ordered? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. And your honor, the state would also ask that the court order that he abide by the uh, injunction that is in place under 2020 DR 9046 A. All right. I will add that to the order, sir. Do you understand you're to abide by the injunction? Um, I'm not really sure what that means. I'm sorry. So there's a current injunction that yes, is in Yes, that's place? what I received yesterday, and that's why I don't understand why I had a warrant for my arrest. So the night. warrant for today has to do with something that happened on August 27th. And when you call your lawyer, they'll be able to provide you with a copy of the affidavit. Okay. Or I don't know if Mr. Matos has one there now that he can provide you. But um, this is regarding something that happened back in on August, uh, I'm sorry, August 25th. So the injunction that was given okay. to you yesterday, you're going to need to abide by that injunction, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, your name? Uh, Caleb Hernandez. Mr. Hernandez, this is 20 CF 10520. You were arrested for false imprisonment, battery, and tampering with a witness to hinder communication to law enforcement. There is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to have any contact with the victim. You're to maintain a separate residence. You may have a one-time return with law enforcement to get your things if needed. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. Mr. Hernandez, do you have any questions about anything that I've ordered? No, ma'am. All right, sir, I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, your name? 
Uh, Christian Morales? Mr. Morales, you were here in 20 CF 10521. You were arrested for felony battery and false imprisonment. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Good morning, ma'am. Hi. Please tell me your name. Samantha Santos. Ms. Santos, you're going to need to move closer to the microphone so that I'm able to hear you. Thank you. Ma'am, do you want to have contact with Mr. Morales? Yes. Pardon me? Yes. Okay. Ma'am, again, you have to speak yes. closer. Thank you. Are you afraid of him? No. Do you live together? Oh, uh, we used to. Okay. Are you returning to Connecticut? Yes. Okay. All right, Ms. Bush, do you have any questions for the witness? Ms. Santos, how long have you been in a relationship with Mr. Morales? About a year. And over the course of that year, has there ever been any violence in your relationship? No. If something like this were to occur again, would you be comfortable calling law enforcement? Yes. I have no further questions. Thank you, ma'am. No questions from the defense now. Mr. Morales, at this time I'm going to order that you're not to have any contact with Ms. Santos. You're to maintain a separate residence. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. I will place you on pretrial release at this time. Do you have any questions about anything that I've ordered? Uh, no, ma'am. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Tell me your name. Elias Porta Fajardo. Sir, you're here in 20 CF 10494. You were arrested for aggravated battery, battery, great bodily harm, and dating violence. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Ma'am, good morning. Good morning. Tell me your name. Constance Coda. Ms. Coda, do you want to have contact um, with Mr. Porta Fajardo? Yes. Are you afraid of him? No. How long have you been in a relationship? Two years. Do you have children together? No. Are there any children in the home? No. And during the course of your two-year relationship, have there been any instances of violence between the two of you? No. Are you afraid of him? No. Ms. Bush, do you have any questions? Um, no, Your Honor. No question. All right. Sir, at this time, I'm going to order that you are not to have any hostile contact with um, Ms. Coda, do you understand what that means? No, ma'am. All right, it means that you're not to act aggressive toward her, you cannot argue with her, you cannot fight with her. Yes, ma'am. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Sir. I'm sorry. Good morning. Good morning, miss. Tell me your name. Khalid Sabir. Mr. Sabir, sir, you were arrested in 20 CF 10264. This was pursuant to a warrant for tampering with the witness to hinder communication to law enforcement and for battery. This was pursuant to a probable cause order. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You are not to have any contact with the victim. I'm going to appoint the public defender, as I said, you're to maintain a separate residence. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. Sir, the named victim in the um, information that the state filed is Hasna ha Hana Sabir. This door. allegedly occurred on February 5th of 2020. I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time. Okay, thank you, sir. Sir, do you have any questions about anything that I've ordered? Yes, yes, Your Honor. I can hear you. I said, do you have any questions about anything that I've ordered? Because the case it was closed in 24th. I can't hear you. The case it was closed in 24th, July 24th. I don't know because my lawyer and everybody signed. Just a second. Sir, 
I don't know if there was a different case, but this case was filed at large with the state attorney's office. So the police gave the information to the state attorney. The state attorney did an investigation and determined whether or not they wanted to press charges or file charges, which they did. And uh, a warrant was issued for your arrest on August 25th and then you're here today. So you need to talk to your lawyer about any other issues that you're aware of, okay? Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Good morning, your name? Neil J. Walker. All right, Mr. Walker, I need you to have you pull your mask up for me, please. Oh. Thank you. This is case number 20 CF 10478. Sir, you were arrested for child abuse and battery domestic violence. There's probable cause. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Ma'am, good morning. Say good morning. Good morning. Tell me your name, please. Nigeria Norton. Ms. Norton, do you want to have contact with Mr. Walker? No. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Bush, any questions? No, Your Honor. No question, Your Honor. Mr. Walker, you're not to have any contact with Ms. Norton. You are to maintain a separate residence. You may have a one-time return with law enforcement to get your things if needed. You're not to possess any weapons or firearm. Bond on count one is 1,000. Bond on count two is 100. Mr. Walker, do you have any questions about anything that I've ordered this morning? No, ma'am. All right, thank you. Your thank Honor, you, ma we'd like to ask for a no contact order with for both victims. Okay, yes. The one-year-old. Well, is a victim child, as well so and order. if there is any dcf investigation to comply with any dcf investigation all right so mr walker you understand you're going to need to uh, cooperate with any dcf requests or investigations the no contact order does apply to your son okay so in order to have contact with him you're going to need to get that modified um, and your lawyer can file a motion and knows what to do regarding that. But you cannot contact her regarding your son at this time. Do you understand? Th that's not his son, Your Honor. I'm that's, sorry. That's not oh. my biological child. So. Oh, okay. I must have read it wrong. Um, okay, then you're not, but you're not to have any contact with that child, sir. Do you understand? No problem. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Sir, good morning. Your name? Oh, Roger Watts. Mr. Watts, this is 20 CF 10510. You were arrested for aggravated battery on a pregnant person. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to have any contact with the victim. You're to maintain a separate residence. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. You may have a one-time return with the police to get your things if needed. Bond will be $1,000, sir. Do you have any questions about anything that I've ordered? Um, I do have questions because I, um, I want to know because... Um, I can't hear you, sir. Yeah, I do have questions because, like, the, um, uh, the incident that happened yesterday was... But um, like I just I just got out the phone with her, but so, because so listen, I'm gonna stop you. That's not a question about anything that I've ordered. I'm asking you if you have a question about the no contact order. I don't want to talk about the facts of your case. You'll have to talk with your lawyer about that, sir. So I have to make bond to be released. Yes. So I had to make pay a hundred dollars. If that's what they charge you on a thousand dollars, yes. So so that that's what I have to pay a hundred. Okay. That's, it's gonna be somewhere around there. Um. Ma'am, good morning. Your name? Doris Amable. Ma'am, you were here in 20 MM 759. You were arrested for battery domestic violence. There's probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to have any contact with the victim. You are to maintain a separate residence. You may have a one-time return with the police to get your things if needed. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time. Do you have any questions about anything that I've ordered? 
Can I can I ask him first? Well, why don't you ask your lawyer? Oh, I don't. Okay. So maybe. Uh, Your Honor, yes. can we ask uh, for a one-time return to retrieve a vehicle? Yes, I already said that. Okay, perfect. So you just want to call the cops. You're going to wait for the cops to tell you where to show up. You're going to go with them. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Any other questions, call that number. And Your Honor, was that pre-trial release? Yes. yes. Thank you. Yeah. You have it? You have the phone Good morning, Mr. Pius. Are you on the line? I am. Good morning, Your Honor. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Good. I'm doing fine, thanks. Thanks for allowing me to appear by telephone. Um, I'm Mr. Harrison Barrick. Sure, no problem. This is case number 20MM6347. Sir, please right. tell me your name. Harrison Barrick. Uh, Mr. Barrick. Okay, and then Mr. Pius, would you just put your appearance on the record? Yes, Your Honor. Carlos Pies on behalf of the defendant. All right, Mr. Barrick, you were arrested for battery domestic violence. Mr. Pius, did you want to be heard with respect to bond? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Barrick's father is here, and if you want to hear from him, uh, we're seeking an ROR, and uh, he's, uh, he has no objection to his son returning back to the house. It was a total misunderstanding. And in fact, he's going to be signing the declination. If you'd like to hear that from the father himself, I'll be happy to put him on the phone. He's here um, waiting to speak. But that's what we are seeking, Your Honor. I'm going to be represent representing Mr. Barrett throughout the whole case. He's at a risk of flight. And uh, the father, again, has no objection to having him come back to the house. You have Mr. Barrett there with you in the office? I do, Your Honor. Okay. Could you put him on the line? Absolutely. One second, Your Honor. Ms. Bush, do you have any objection from me talking to him over the Hello? telephone? I know we can't see Mr. Barrett. The state has no objection as long as he's sworn in. Okay. Mr. Barrett, could you please raise your right hand for me to be sworn in by the clerk? Yes. Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you should give should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Mr. Barrett, I was just speaking with Mr. Pius, your son's attorney, and he informed me that you do want to have contact with your son. Is that correct? That is correct. Are you afraid of him? No. Do you have any concerns about him returning home to live with you? No, I do not. Are there any other people in the home that you would have concerns about if I were to allow him to return home? Uh, my fiance, Claudia, lives, uh, lives with us, and she's sitting right here if you need to talk to her. Um, Mr. Barrett, has anything like this happened in the past? Not, not to this degree. I mean, there's been verbal discussions and so forth, but not to this degree, no. Okay. Uh, is your son taking any medication? Yes, he does. Okay. Is he taking that um, as he's directed? Or Sorry, as what was that? Is he taking the medication as prescribed? No, um, I, I found out... Uh, after going and looking at his med, his meds uh, laid out in a, in a daily AM and PM, and, and he hadn't taken his AM meds for the for the last week. Okay. Okay. Miss Bush, did you have any questions for Mr. Barrett? No, Your Honor. All right. Um, Mr. Pius, I don't know if you can hear me. Is there anything else you wanted to add? You know, Your Honor, um, I, I, I could hear you um, a little bit. We discussed it all morning. We're making arrangements to ensure that he does take his meds, uh, continue treatment with a psychiatrist, and we're trying to put together a game plan so that this won't happen again. Okay. So we're on top of it and trying to ensure uh, that uh, my client takes his meds and, uh, and uh, we won't have this problem again. Okay. 
So at this time, I, I did find probable cause. And at this time, Mr. Barrick, I'm going to order that you are not to have any hostile contact with your dad. Do you understand what that means? Yes. Okay. You're also not to possess any weapons or firearms. And I'm going to order that you are to comply with all of your doctor's uh, orders and recommendations at this time. Okay. okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Do you have any questions? Nope. No? Okay. Anything else, Mr. Pius? I didn't hear as to regard to bond, Your Honor. You oh, I, it, yes, it is. Okay. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Have a wonderful right. day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for allowing me to be at home. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Good morning. Tell me your name. Aaron Butler. Mr. Butler, you're here in 20 MM 6345. You were arrested for battery, domestic violence. There is probable cause. I am going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Good morning. Good morning. Tell me your name, please. Thaddeus Dwayne Clark Jr. All right, sir. I'll just also need you to speak into the microphone for me so it's a little difficult to hear with our masks on. Yes, it's Thaddeus Dwayne Clark Jr. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Do you want to have contact with Mr. Butler? Yes. Are you afraid of him? No. And do you live together? Yes, we do. And how long have you lived together? Two years now, a little over two years. During the course of your two year relationship, have there been any instances of violence between the two of you? Um, we've had verbal arguments and pushing matches, but nothing of this degree. All right, are you afraid of him? No, I am not. Do you want to continue living together? Yes, I would. Are there any children in the home? No, ma'am, there isn't. Ms. Bush, any questions for the witness? No, Your Honor. No Ms. Rocco? Okay. Mr. Butler, at this time, I'm going to order you not to have any hostile contact um, with Mr. Clark. Do you understand what that means? Yes. You are not to possess any weapons or firearms, and I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time. Thank you. Your Honor, I have a question. You have a question? Mr. Um, Clark? for pretrial release, um, what do I do from this point? You'll just wait for a phone call. He'll call you when he's ready to get picked up. He'll be released later today. Okay, thank okay. you. You're welcome, sir. Is there anyone in the gallery here for Roman Waters? Okay, thank you, ma'am. I'm going to try to address your case this morning, okay? Thank you. King. Ms. King, you're here in 20 MM 762. You were arrested for battery domestic violence. Yes, there is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Good morning. Tell me your name, please. My name. <coughs> Are you Ruthina King? 
My name is Ruthina King. I'm Keona's King's mother. This is her stepfather. And basically, I'm I'm not a you're on I'm not afraid of Kiana. Okay. But Kiana does a lot of things in the home that I disapprove of. And Kiana will not take her psych meds or none of that nature. Um, okay. She just won't take her medicine. She just got out of Lakeside uh, on the 19th of August. Okay. And she won't take her medicine. Not at all. I understand. Are I basically you? need help with Kiana. Sure. Do you need, do you want to have contact with her? I, I beg your pardon now? Do you want to have contact with her? Yes, but... I would like for you to put stipulations on that. No hostile contact with me, no putting her hands on me uh, at, at all. Do you have concerns about your safety or your husband's safety if I were to allow contact between the two of you? Say it again now. Do you have any concerns about your safety or your husband's safety or any of the people that are living in the home? Do you have any concerns about their safety? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, so what I think I want to do is have Ms. Uh, King screened for mental health pretrial release. Um, Mom, would you be paying her bond if I were to set a bond? And how much a bond is? Well, I, I'm, I'm going to determine that in a moment, but I, I guess my question is, would you be the person that would be paying the bond for her? Or does she have the ability to pay that on her own? Oh, yes, ma'am. I'd be paying it, yes. Okay. So yes. what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to set the bond... Um, at 500 because she's entitled to a bond, but I want her to be screened for the mental health pretrial release program. If she doesn't qualify, uh, then maybe reset her case because she does qualify for PTR, uh, and we can go that route. Um, so set or mental health PTR. So this is what I'm going to do, Miss King. This is what I think might serve your family the best um, with the resources that we have right now. We have a program called the Mental Health Pretrial Release Program. Ma'am, can you hear me? Not really. No, you can't hear me? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Now I can. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So I'm trying to explain that we have something called the Mental Health Pretrial Release Program. Yes, ma'am. It's a little bit different than our typical PTR or pretrial program where they concentrate on helping Big you... Point focus on taking your meds consistently or linking you with whatever resources that you may need the community to help you manage the problems that you're having. Okay. They'll give you a case manager. I don't know if you already have one or not, but they'll give you a specialized case manager and they'll um, also monitor your appointments with Lakeside and that type of, of thing. They'll also monitor your court case and make sure that you get to court uh, and do that. Sometimes they have a place where you can stay. And yes, sometimes they have folks go home. So it just kind of depends on what the best plan of action or case plan is for you, ma'am. Okay. So yes, I'm going to have her screened for that first. Okay. Okay? If she right. doesn't qualify, she does have a bond, but I'm going to ask that she be brought back to court. Okay. So that if she doesn't qualify, I can place her on just regular pretrial release. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Anything else? No, that's basically it. So basically, I, it's basically just what she yes, said from the whole That's basically it, yes. Okay, I so just, I'm going to order there to be no hostile contact, ma'am. Yes, that means you please. can't yell at your mom, you can't argue with her, you can't put her, your hands on her, anything like that, and you are not to possess any weapons or firearms. Oh, I, I have two more requests. Yes, ma'am. No knives. Well, that's no a weapon. No mace. That, those are weapons. So no you can't mace. have knives or mace. Do you understand? Um... I've been living in my home since 2014. Kiana have made a total of 4,000 calls to one address. That need to stop. Okay, ma'am. For nonsense. Ms. Bush? And Your Honor, if the court would also order that Ms. King uh, take all prescribed medications. Yes. Ms. Yes, King, you're going to need to take your medication as the doctor has prescribed it to you and follow your doctor's orders. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Anything else, Mom? 
Um, uh, I, I would prefer uh, you also put in the order that parent gives Kiana medicine. Not Kiana give her medicine because Kiana ain't going to take it. So me give it to her. Make sure she take it. I, I'm not going to order how she's going to take the medicine. I'm just ordering that you must take it. Do you understand? Okay. Yes, ma'am. All okay. right. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice day. And then, ma'am, you're here on Roman Waters, is that right? Are you his mother? Okay. How you doing, ma'am? Is this Mr. Rivera? Yes, ma'am. Okay, just one second. Can I ask a question? Ma'am, your son is in a different building at this time. We've got to have him brought over. He was set for the afternoon, but we're going to see if we can get him here before the end of the morning session, and we'll call him up as soon as we can. Otherwise, he'll be the first person in the second session. You want to come in the box, ma'am? Hi there. Tell me your name. Kalandra Harris. Miss Harris. Okay, what were you trying to tell me? They had told me 9 o'clock this morning, so I had counsel, um, my counsel treatment to be here at 9 o'clock. I'm sorry about that, ma'am. Um, in the future, I would call either my office or Judge Wish's office, and they'll be able to tell you when the case will be set. With the coronavirus, they've, they've moved around all of the docket, so normally it would be 9 o'clock, but because of the way that um, we have to run court because of the pandemic, they've changed that. So I do apologize for the misinformation. Um, but like I said, we are working on getting your son over here as soon as possible so that we can hear the case. All right. Okay? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. You're Mr. Rivera? Yes, ma'am. All right, sir. You were here in 20 MM 765. You were arrested for violation of a pretrial release condition on a domestic violence case. There's probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender on this case and also in, thank you, in 20 MM 766, where you were arrested for resisting officer without violence, possession of alcohol by a person under 21, and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. There's probable cause for those offenses. Your bond on count one will be 100. Bond on count two will be 100. Bond on count three will be 500. And in 20 MM 765, your bond will be $1,500. You're, again, you're not to have any contact um, with the victim. In 20 MM 4068. And I'm revoking the bond in that case. That will be set at none. Wait, so I can't go home today? No. But I was told by my lawyer that, so I got our, our thing uh, taken away to contact thing because she talked to a state attorney, my lawyer told me, and I was able to get no hostile contact form of her. And I was told that two weeks ago. And I've let got me look in that. Let me look in that case to see it in there. But you also have the problem of that you're on. You're out on bond on several other cases. So I'm revoking the bonds in those two. Can, can so you're you not going to be able to bond out today. Can you please help me out? I because I'm start. I have work tomorrow, and I just started a second job. And my mom can't afford to pay for the house by herself. And I, I should have had all this dealt with, but Corona keeps pushing back everything. All my court cases, or I've had everything dealt with by now. Please, ma'am. I know I, I've messed up, but I really, really want to go back home and help my family, please. <laughs> well, I don't see an order modifying the no contact order. That's what I was told. He said that they spoke well, you to have to get those in writing, and that's what the order says. So, Mr. Vera, unfortunately, at this time, your bond is revoked. Bond is set at none, and bond is also revoked in 20 CF 6119, 20 CF 4418, and... 20 mm 4068, 20 mm 370. All of those bonds will be set at none. So that means I have everything from the past taken. Correct. So I'm stuck in here for at least a few months. I don't know, ma'am. You have to talk to your lawyer, sir. You have to talk to your lawyer. 
Thank you. <laughs> Please, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. Tell me your name. Maria Smith. Miss Smith, you are here in case number 20MM6354. You were arrested for battery domestic violence. There is probable cause. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Good morning, sir. Sir? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Sir, you're going to have to speak into the microphone so that I can yes, hear you. Yes, ma'am. Tell me your name. Muhammad Abdel Fattah. Sir, do you want to have contact with your wife? No, no ma'am. Okay, thank you, sir. Ma'am, you're not to have any contact with your husband. You are to maintain a separate residence. You are not to possess any weapons or firearms. You may have a one-time return with the police to get your things if needed. I will place you on pretrial release at this time. Do you have any questions about anything that I've ordered? Um, so what is pretrial? So you're going to be supervised by a pretrial release officer while you're in the community waiting for your case to go to court. You'll have to call in and check in with them okay. while your case is pending. Okay. Okay. Do you have any questions about the no contact order? No, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Shaquilla Latrice Ward. Miss Ward, you are here in case number 20MM429, you were arrested for battery. Mm -hmm. There's probable cause. I am going to appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to have any contact with the victim. You're to maintain a separate residence. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. Yes, ma'am. Can I place Ms. Ward on pretrial release? It says her emergency contact was contacted and she can re reside with him. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. yes okay. Yes, Ms. Ward, I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time. Do you have any questions about anything that I've ordered? Um, no, ma'am. Um, pretrial is release is re is. It is, you are going to have to call in and check in with a pretrial release officer. They're going to supervise you in the community until your case has been completed in court. Okay. So you won't have to post any money to get out of the jail, but you'll be supervised on the pretrial release program. Okay. And uh, they'll provide me with all the numbers for me to check in and all that stuff. Absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Good morning, your name? Amanda Williams. Ms. Williams, this is 20MM220. You were arrested for battery. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You are not to have any contact with the victim. You are to maintain a separate residence. You may return one time with the police to get your things if needed. You're not to possess or consume any alcohol or controlled substances without a valid prescription. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, good morning. Good morning. Your name? Jeffrey Fernandez. Mr. Fernandez, you have two cases this morning, 20MM6349. You were arrested for possession of drug paraphernalia. There's probable cause. Also in 20CT3521, this is because you failed to appear for court in a no valid driver's license hmm. uh, case. Do you want to resolve those cases this morning? Yes, ma'am. All right. Ms. Bush, do you have an offer for Mr. Fernandez? Yes, Your Honor. If I may have just a moment. The global offer from the state would be an adjudication of guilt, 
five days Orange County Jail, two days credit time served, and on the driver's license, um, that would be do not drive without a valid driver's license and court costs. How many days does Mr. Fernandez have on the 20 CT 3521? Two days, Your Honor. Two? Okay. Mr. Fernandez, did you want to take the offer from the state? You do? Yes, Did you read the plea form before court this morning? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving up? No, ma'am. Are you on probation? No, ma'am. Do you understand if you are not a U.S. citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes, ma'am. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No, ma'am. Sir, I'm going to accept your plea in both cases, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to five days in jail with credit for two days' time served. In 20 CT 3521, you are not to drive without a valid driver's license. Those sentences will run concurrent to one another. You will have to pay court costs in each. They'll be due by September 1st of 2021. Okay. And you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. That's it. Thank you. Good morning, your name? John Kaufman. Mr. Kaufman, you're here in 20 CT 5394 and 20 CT 5395. You were arrested for driving under the influence and refusing to submit to a DUI test. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Bond on count one is 500, bond on count two is 100, sir. Thank you. Good morning, your name? Rafi Puedes. So you're here in 19 CT 8025. You failed to appear for a violation of probation status hearing. Your bond is set at $5,000. Mr. Um, Matos, do you want to enter a denial for Mr. Um, yes, Your Honor. Okay, sir, I've appointed the public defender to represent you. Um, What the I'm going to give you a court date in Division 81. That's Judge McGinnis. Your VOP status date is September 21st at 9 a.m. at courtroom 4E. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Tell me your name. Uh, Brown. Dwayne Brown. Yes, ma'am. Sir, you're here in 20 MM 5386. This is your arraignment for the offense of trespass on property. You are represented by the public defender. How would you like to proceed, Mr. Matos? Dwayne Brown. Um, I think he's, he's, do we have an offer? He, no, he, he's one that has a related case pending. Your Honor, he has a related case pending, pending Brown? under 2020 CF 10180. Okay, so at this time, do you want to enter a plea of not guilty, yes, Mr. Matos? Well, Mr. Brown, I'm going to give you a court date um, in Division 62. That's going to be in front of Judge Cameron. Your pretrial conference is October 22nd at 9 a.m. in its courtroom um, 9B. I, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Is this Dana Brown or... Dwayne Dana Brown, correct? Yeah. I'm sorry, okay, so Your Honor. Yeah. I was looking at the other Brown. I apologize. Okay. And uh, yes, there is an offer for Mr. Dana Brown. I apologize, Your Honor. And that offer was an adjudication of guilt, 38 days Orange County Jail, no contact with victim or witnesses, no return to the scene, the 7-Eleven at 1250 South John Young Parkway, abide by all trespass warnings, cost of investigation to the Orlando Police Department in the amount of $50.16 and court costs. Right. My apologies, Your Honor. No problem. Mr. Brown, tell me your birthday. Um, March 18th, 1996. All right. Mr. Brown, did you want to accept that offer? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did you read the plea form before court? Uh, yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions about any of the rights you're giving up? Uh, no, ma'am. 
Are you on probation? Uh, no, ma'am. No? No. Do you understand that entry of this plea will result in your deportation? Yes, ma'am. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No, ma'am. All right, I'll accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to 38 days in jail. You have credit for 38 days time served. You are not to return to the scene or have any contact with any of the witnesses yes, or victims. That's the 7-Eleven, sir. You have been trespassed from there, so don't, you're not to return and abide by the warning. Okay. You'll have to pay the cost of investigation to the Orlando Police Department on $50.16 along with court costs, which will be due by September 1st of 2021. You have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. So I will be going home today. Does he have any holds? No. You'll be released today, sir. All right. Thank you. Oh, okay. Miss Bush, Mr. Matos, we're gonna do Mr. Waters' case. Um, it's for the afternoon. It's from the afternoon session. He's a juvenile, and his mom has been here all morning. Yes, Your Honor. Um, and I can give everyone a moment to take a look at that. I haven't read it myself. Please. And, Your Honor, if the court wishes, I can print out for both the court and defense counsel. I if you'll just printed give me out 17 pages uh, that would provide probable cause. It also includes his face sheet and his dray. Yes, please. Thank you, Ms. Bush. Mm -hmm. Are you Mr. Waters? Yes, ma'am. All right, Mr. Waters, I need a moment to review some information that the state's going to give me, and then I'll address your case, okay? Yes, ma'am. Your mom is also here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. problems with my printer so if I could just forward this to Madam Clerk if you just want to forward is it a, like a PDF you could forward to me and to Mr. Mato so I can just read it uh, yes your honor okay The only thing that this does not have is the information that was filed.
Mr. Matos, let me ask you this. Are you going to request that the entire Arthur hearing take place downtown? Um, Your Honor, if you give me like two more minutes to read, sure. I'll be able to tell you that. Sure. Yes, Your Honor, I will. All right. You're not going to um, make the state meet their burden at this time of proof evidence or presumption? Not at right? this time, Your Honor. All right, let me just call the case. Mr. Waters, you were arrested for uh, attempted murder and weapons violations. This was pursuant to a probable cause capius. It has been transferred from the juvenile division to the adult court. At this time, your lawyer has informed me that he would like your entire bond hearing to take place downtown. They'll need to schedule that with the trial judge in front of... Um, in front of the judge where the case is going to be heard. So at this time, Ms. Bush, I don't know if there's, I, I just, based on what you gave me, I only have those two counts. Um, Ms. Williams, do you show two counts? Uh, no, Your Honor, the information is a four count information. Count one is attempted second degree murder. Count two, aggravated battery with a deadly weapon or causing great bodily harm. Count three, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. And count four, possession of a firearm by a minor. Can I see the statute number for the attempted second? Yes, you Your Honor. That? And uh, may I approach? Sure. With the information. Thank you. Okay, it's attempted second with a firearm. That's what I wanted to make sure. Okay, thank you, Ms. Bush. I didn't hear you say that part. So Mr. Waters, the state has charged you by information with four counts, attempted second degree murder with a firearm, which is a punishable by life felony. So your lawyer has requested that your bond hearing on that, on that charge be taken place in division 16 in front of the trial judge. You were also charged with aggravated battery with a deadly weapon or causing great bodily harm, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and possession of a firearm by a minor. You are entitled to bonds on counts two through four. Bond on count two will be 5,000. Bond on count three, 2,500. Bond on count four, 2,500. You're not to have any contact with any of the witnesses that it's mentioned in the probable cause documentation or um, or the victim in this matter. You're also not to possess any weapons or firearms or return to the scene. Do you have any questions about those conditions, sir? No, uh, Okay. The only question I have is for the bonds. Okay. Because on my, on, my on my paper sheet, it said, um, it said on the first two, from two to three, it said it was $150, and then on the fourth one, it was 250 so those I don't I don't have that paperwork, but when you're arrested and, are, and you get, are given a bond at that time, it's only good until you come to first appearance. So on the first one, you weren't given a bond because yes, um, of the type of charge that it is. Mm -hmm. And now I've modified the bond on counts two through four. So when you go to have your hearing in front of the judge in Division 16, there that judge is going to determine whether or not you get a bond on count one. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. I understand that part. Okay. I was just asking about the last Sure. Thing. You're, I'm, I'm glad that you asked. Mom, did you have any questions? So, um, my thing is, when can he be bonded out? Because he takes care of me. 
Like, right now, I'm not supposed to be out by myself. Right. He makes sure, you know, I take my meds. He watched for my seizures. He takes me to my cancer appointments. Right. And it's hard right now because, you know. Uh, yeah, ma'am, I don't, I don't oh, have an oh, answer. Like, this is not my baby lifestyle. My right. baby don't even own a gun. I don't even have guns in my house. So, <laughs> it's like, it's hard for me right now. Sure. Ma'am, I can understand that. Um, but at this time, he does not have a bond on count one. That's something that he's going to have to see the trial division judge about. And I don't know if the judge will, will give him a bond or not. I don't know what the evidence all shows. And I don't have enough information to give that to you. I'm very sorry. You'll need to get in contact with the public defender's office so that you can help them with his bond hearing. And you, it sounds like you have some information that they'd like to probably share with the court. So you're going to want to get in contact with the public defender's office regarding your son's case. How can I get a copy of what you just got? Because what I read on the clerk of courts, it's all a lot. That, ma'am, that may be true. I'm not passing any judgment on whether I think it's true or false. I'm just simply telling you and your son what he was arrested for and charged with and setting his conditions of release. So if you have, if there's discrepancies in what you read, that's, again, something you need to talk to his lawyer about. Okay, so okay. he has no bond right now? No, he can't bond out. Thank you, ma'am, and thank you for coming today. Thank you, Mr. Waters. Thank you, ma'am. Have a nice Good morning, your name? Good morning. I'm a. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I'm a uh, Captain Cap, Mr. Garden. So today I just come in here. So it's not okay for me to be here. So, and I just come in to please them. So, to sir, give I, me just, I, I need you to tell me your name. And I'm a uh, Captain Cap, Mr. Garden. All right. Is this Mr. Cardenas? No. Can we pass by Mr. Cardenas? Please? All right. Are you Mr. Cooks? This is Mr. Grandin. Ah, oh, got it. Okay. Mr. Grandin, this is 20 MM 5405. You are represented by the Office of the Public Defender. Mr. Matos, would you like to enter a plea of not guilty at this time? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Yes. So, Mr. Grandin, I'm going to give you a new court date. That's going to be a Division 62. Your pretrial conference is October 22nd at 9 a.m. in courtroom 9B. Thank you, sir. Mr. Cooks is medical, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Matos, your office represents him in 20 MM 5402. Would you like to enter a plea of not guilty and waive his appearance? Yes, Your Honor. That's again a Division 62 case, pretrial conference, October 22nd, 9 AM, courtroom 9B. That's 20 MM 5839. I'm going to appoint the public defender's office to appoint Mr. Johnson. Mr. Matos, would you like to enter a plea of not guilty? Yes, Your Honor. Division 62, pretrial conference, October 22nd, 9 a.m., courtroom 9B. Oh, wait, uh, thank you, um, Dexter. Hold on, back up on uh, Michael Johnson. That's actually a Division 84 case. That's Steve Jewett. Pre-trial conference is October 8th at 10 a.m. Courtroom 4B. And, then, and that was on Michael Johnson. Your Honor, was that for B. Baker or D. Delta? B. Baker. Thank you. And then Ms. LaCoya Bell is... Medical. Medical. Mr. Matos, I'm going... Or you're actually appointed to represent her. Do you want to waive her appearance? Yes, Your Honor. That's 20 MM 5296. That's also a Division 84 case. Pre-trial conference, October 8th, 10 a.m., courtroom 4B. Uh, That's 20 MM, 6263. Mr. Matos, would you like to waive the appearance and enter a plea of not guilty? Yes, Your Honor. Um, Rodriguez, Division 82, pre-trial conference, September 21st. Yes. Oh, 
Oh, okay. So that's going to be, I'm sorry, in Division 50 pretrial conference, October 5th at 2.30 p.m., courtroom 7C. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Tell me your name. Jeffrey Smiley. Mr. Smiley, you're here in 20MM 5294. This is your arraignment for the offense of petty theft of $100 or more. You are represented by the Office of the Public Defender. Mr. Matos, how would he like to proceed? Uh, Your Honor, he has probation, so we would like to uh, enter a plea of not guilty this time. <coughs> All right, Mr. Smiley, given that you're on probation, your lawyer has um, indicated you're going to enter a plea of not guilty at this time. Your next court date is going to be in Division 82, pretrial conference, September 21st at 10.30 a.m. in courtroom 10B. Thank you, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Tell me your name. David Walker. Mr. Walker, this is case number 20MM5347. The summons was returned served. Mr. Walker, this is your arraignment for the offense of violation of a domestic injunction. Mm -hmm. I am going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Mr. Uh, Matos, did you want to enter a plea of not guilty? Yes, Your Honor. All right. This is a Division 50 case. Pre-trial conference is October 5th at 2.30 p.m. in courtroom 7C. Thank you, sir. Uh out of uh, Osceola County. Um, at this time, I'm going to set a bond in the amount of $500 on Your Mr. Dolan's case. Your State have just one moment to switch over to sure. that document. I'm sorry, Your Honor. And the bond amount was? 500 Thank you. Sure. No. It's an Osceola County case. Good morning. Your name? Tomas Antonio Rodriguez. Mr. Rodriguez, you were uh, here in court yesterday. Today I will set bond in the amount of $500 with pretrial release. You are not to have any contact with the victim. You are to maintain a separate residence. You may have a one-time return with the police to get your things if needed and you're not to possess any weapons or firearms, and you're not to possess or consume any alcohol or um, go to any bars. Gotcha. Do you understand? Yes. All right, sir, do you have um, any questions? Well, uh, the pre-trial release, do I have to pay the 500? You, do you have to pay the bond of 500, and then you're also gonna have pre-trial release. Okay, okay. And that'll be supervised through um, Osceola County. Um. Judge on One more question. Uh, do I make a uh, bond here in Orange County? Yes. Or? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Ms. Williams? On Dolan, he has two counts. Do, did you want to do 250, 250? Please. Okay. On Dolan, it's an out of county. It's 250 and 250, so it's still the 500. Well, it's going to stay super slow right now. 20 mm, 43. 86. Sir, good afternoon. What's your name? Juan Cardenas. Mr. Cardenas, you are here in 20MM4386. This is your arraignment for the offense of petty theft. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Actually, um, Attorney Cheney Mason. That's my attorney. Has he filed a notice of appearance? Um, I just found out about this two days ago. They, uh, I was summoned inside the jail, didn't right. even get a chance 
to let him know. So I didn't know if I could have this continued or how that works out, Your Honor, because I literally was served two days ago. Right, that's why you're here for an arraignment. What an arraignment is, it's just telling you what you have been charged with. I don't I want a public defender. Uh, Cheney Mason's representing me on all cases. Sir, you're gonna be in Division 85. Your pretrial conference is September 20th uh, at 9 a.m. and that's in Quorum 4A. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, good afternoon. Your name? Matthew Owen. Mr. Owen, you're here in 20MM219. You were arrested for disturbing the peace. There is probable cause. Is there an offer for Mr. Owen? Yes, Your Honor. It's an adjudication of guilt, two days Orange County Jail, two days credit time served, and court costs. And no return to 147 East Lyman Avenue in Winter Park. All right. Sir, did you want to accept the offer? Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, that's, uh, does that mean I'll get, I'll get released? today it does and i can't i can't return to the street of lyman avenue in winter park that's right okay okay did you read the plea form before court this afternoon i the 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 piece of paper yeah Okay, do you understand all of the constitutional rights that you're giving up by entering the plea? E I, yeah. Are you on probation, sir? Uh, no. Do you understand if you're not a US citizen that this plea will result in your deportation? I, yeah. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No. All right, sir. I'll accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to two days in jail. You have credit for two days' time served. You're not to return to 147 East Lyman Avenue. You'll have to pay court costs, which will be due by August. I'm sorry, by September 1st of 2021. You have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing, sir. Thank you, Mr. Owen. Good afternoon, your name? Luis Reyes. Mr. Reyes, you're here in 20 CF 10515. You were arrested for attempted second degree murder with a weapon and burglary of an occupied dwelling, as well as criminal mischief. There is probable cause for the offenses. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Mr. Matos, did you want to um, have the entire Arthur hearing downtown? Uh, your Honor, we would like to find presumption and leave it at the court's discretion, see if we can get a reasonable bond. All right, Ms. Bush, if you would um, yes, your establish Honor. proof evident or presumption great or attempt to. The state would assert that based on the facts contained in the sworn arrest affidavit, facts that were provided by the victim and witnesses, Your Honor, that uh, and the facts that included statements by Mr. Reyes uh, the state would ask the court to find that proof is evident or presumption is great that Mr. Reyes is indeed the individual that did um, attack and stab the victim in this matter with a knife. Mr. Reyes's statements were that um, he intentionally aimed for the victim's chest and um, 
he said that he did that because he felt threatened. However, um, that threat was by someone that approached him after he burglarized their dwelling and um, took a swing at him, but Mr. Reyes instead responded with a stab to the what he believed was the chest. The state would ask that the court find that proof is evident or presumption is great that he is the person that did commit this act. The state would also ask that uh, the court take into consideration that he has no history whatsoever. And as he has no history, the state would just ask the court to set a bond that would be appropriate with a finding of proof evident or presumption great, a bond that is appropriate for a, an attempted second degree murder with a knife. Okay, Mr. Matos? Your Honor, um, as the state has uh, said, uh, there was the defendant, uh, one of the, the victim comes, at, uh, comes home back from, I want to say, I don't remember exactly the place, but it, he comes back from shopping he finds Mr. Uh, my client standing on the other side of the road, comes in and swings out. My client happened to uh, use it, alleging the facts that he uses a knife to stab him in the chest. Your Honor, as you can see, the presumption is that we're looking for a second degree charge. The affidavit is clear on the fact that he was stabbed in the chest. Uh, it's alleged that he he in, in, intended to stab them in the, in, in, the, in the chest, Your Honor. My client disagrees with that statement. But um, we just like to we just ask for a reasonable bond right now. My client, uh, the state said my client has no. Uh, we were asking you to use your discretion to set a reasonable bond. My client has no uh, criminal history, and we can provide some details as to what he would be, who would be able to afford. So I. Based upon the facts that are contained in the affidavits, that ha the state has met their burden to establish that there is proof evident or presumption great. At this time, I'm not going to exercise discretion and set a bond for Mr. Reyes as to count one. Um, you can file a bond motion in division 17. Bond on count one will be, remain at none. Bond on count two is 5,000. Bond on count three will be 500. You're not to have any contact, sir, with any of the witnesses listed in the police report or with the victim. You're not to return to the scene and you're not to possess any weapons or firearms. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, your name? Good one. Oh, Maurice Clark. You Mr. Clark? Yes, ma'am. What about Mr. Redwood? Clark? Hmm? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you? That's, we can do him last, That's, it doesn't matter, it's fine. No, I don't have Mr. Clark. Oh, is that legal? Yeah. All right, Mr. Clark. You are here in 20 MM 430. You were arrested for petty theft. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Was there an offer for Mr. Clark? Yes, Your Honor. The offer would be an adjudication of guilt, five days Orange County Jail with one day credit time served. Um, no contact with witnesses or victim, no return to the scene, the Walgreens at 125 East Main Street in Apopka. Abide by all trespass warnings and court costs, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Clark, did you want to accept the offer? Yes, mm -hmm. All right, sir, did you read the plea form before court? 
I try. I ain't have no time. You what? I may have no time, but I try. All right. Well, there's a form right there, sir. If you could read that and then let me know if you have any questions when you're finished. Did you read the form? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions? No, ma'am. Are you on probation? No, I don't think so. I don't know. You what? I don't think so. You don't think so. Do you have any reason to believe you would be on probation? No, ma'am. Okay. Do you understand if you're not a U.S. citizen, this plea will result in your deportation? Meaning? Excuse me? Meaning. I can't hear you. I'm Meaning. sorry. Meaning? So if you're not a United States citizen, if you entered this plea today, you would be deported. Are, are you a U.S. citizen? I'm from, I'm from the U.S. Okay. Um, Mr. Clark, are you under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication? No, ma'am. All right, sir. I'm going to accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to five days in jail. You have credit for one day time served. You're not to return to the Walgreens and to abide by the trespass warning. Uh, you're not to have any contact with any witnesses or victims. You'll have to pay court costs, which will be due by September 1st of 2021. And you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Garcia refused, Your Honor. All right, I'll find the waiver of Mr. Garcia's appearance based upon his refusal to come to court. As case number 20 mm 6350 he was arrested for trespassing there's probable cause i'll appoint the public defender he's not to return to 7-eleven his bond is five hundred dollars good afternoon sir hello your honor tell me your name james michael gillum mr gillum sir you are here in 20 mm 760 you were arrested for trespassing in a structure there is probable cause. Ms. Bush, is there an offer for Mr. Gillum? Yes, Your Honor. It's an adjudication of guilt. Two days, Orange County Jail. Two days, credit time served. No return to the Walmart in Okoy, Florida. No contact with witnesses or victim. Abide by trespass warning and court cost. Mr. Gillum, did you want to accept that offer, sir? Yes, Your Honor. No contest. Thank you, Mr. Gillum. Did you read the plea form before court? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions about any of the constitutional rights you're giving up? No, Your Honor. Are you on probation? No, Your Honor. You understand if you're not a U.S. citizen that this plea will result in your deportation? Yes. Are you under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication? No, Your Honor. All right, so I'll accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to two days in jail. You have credit for two days' time served. You can't return to the Walmart in Okoe. Uh, you'll have to abide by the trespass warning and not have any contact with the victim or witnesses in the case. You'll have to pay court costs due by September 1st of 2021. You have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. All right, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Mr. Griffin is medical, Your Honor.
we'll reset Mr. Griffin within tw for 24 hours. It's a, is it that kind of medical, Dexter? Yes. Okay. Look for 24 hours from his release from the hospital. You, Mr. Guffey? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Guffey, sir, you are here in case number 20MM6325. You were arrested for, start together, for open container. There is probable cause. Is there an offer for Mr. Guffey? Yes, Your Honor. It's an adjudication of guilt, two days Orange County Jail, two days credit time served, and court costs. Thank you, Ms. Bush. Mr. Guffey, did you want to accept that offer? Yes, ma'am. Did you read the plea form? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving up? Uh, no, ma'am. Are you on probation? No, ma'am. Do you understand if you're not a U.S. citizen that this plea will result in your deportation? Yes, ma'am. Are you the, under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication? No, ma'am. I'll accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to two days in jail. You have credit for two days' time served. You will have to pay court costs due by September 1st of yes. 2021, and you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. We have uh, Mrs. Pichardo here on. Oh, okay. Good morning, or good afternoon. Good morning, ma'am. Tell me your name. Gianni Pichardo. Mr. Pichardo, it looks like you've got three cases here uh, this afternoon. I am going to appoint the public defender to represent you in all of them. You have, these are all out of county cases. They're Osceola County 20 CF 2457. You arrested for robbery with a deadly weapon pursuant to a, a probable cause warrant your bond in that case is set at none mr pichardo i will reach out to osceola county you are entitled to bond on that case so i will reach out to some or to uh, osceola county to see what the judge would like to set the bond as um, i don't have any facts on this case so i'm not comfortable setting a bond on the warrant at this time yes ma'am you have case number 20 CF 2454, which again is an Osceola County warrant. Bond on count one, or I'm sorry, uh, count one is burglary of a dwelling with an assault or battery, and count two is aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Bond on both of those are set at none. Again, I will reach out to Osceola County. You are probably going to have to, well, you are going to have to have a hearing as to count one. That's a punishable by life felony, and so the trial judge is going to need to determine whether or not you're entitled to a bond in that case. Yes, ma'am. So both of those will remain at none. And then case three is 20 CF 2456. It's a five count warrant for attempted felony murder with a firearm, attempted second degree murder with a firearm, aggravated battery causing great bodily harm with a firearm, attempted robbery with a firearm, and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Um, again, these are Osceola County cases. Many of those sir, are life felonies. It'll be up to the judge in those cases to determine whether or not you're going to be eligible for a bond. Um, the public defender is appointed to represent you in all of the cases and they'll know what motions to file and how to coordinate with Osceola County. I got a question though, miss. Like sure. they told me um, like I was supposed to be brought to Osceola County, um, but I don't know, like I, I was told plenty of different things. I don't know sure. what's going so on. Let me just try to explain a couple things. So ordinarily, um, yes, they will move the inmates between the jails right now because of COVID. It's kind of unclear um, who's being moved and who's not. I don't know because you're 17 if they might make an exception and move you. I don't know. Um, I wish I had a better answer for you, but you can certainly talk with your lawyer about that. Um, but unfortunately, just due to the circumstances of how the world is right now, I don't know when they're going to move you. Okay. Thank you, sir.
Good afternoon, your name? Nora Dolorosa. Mr. LaRosa, you're here in 20MM 6344. You were arrested for petty theft. There is probable cause. Ms. Bush, is there an offer for Mr. LaRosa? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the state's doing some math right now, so it might be a second or two. <laughs> okay. For restitution? Yes, Your Honor. Sure. Mr. LaRosa, were you interested in resolving your case today? Is that yes? Yeah. Okay. The state's offer would be an adjudication of guilt, five days Orange County Jail, two days credit time served, no return to the Walmart at 8101 South John Young Parkway, no contact with any witnesses, abide by all trespass warnings, restitution in the amount of $7.41, and court costs. Would you like to take that offer, Mr. LaRosa? Well, we, what, three more days? Right, so, I don't know, two more days? How many more days? Two more days. Two more days. No way I can get out today. Well, you can post a bond. Post my bond? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to get leave. You'd like to post the bond? Yeah. Okay, your bond's $500, sir. Thank you. You're not to return to Walmart. Yeah. Oh, yes, thank you. Good afternoon, your name? Brian Lozano. Sir, this is 20MM6351. You were arrested for possession of cannabis less than 20 grams. It's Your funny Honor, because the affidavit doesn't match the I'm charge. sorry? I was just reading the affidavit. So... It's possession of cannabis less than 20 grams, but the affidavit says there's 56. So those don't And, go. Your Honor, yes, it says that it was 56 grams. Your Honor, the state, while I believe that it's a typo. Okay. Um, if I could have 24 hours to confirm that. I was gonna release him on his own recognizance today. Um, were you initially gonna uh, file a null process, Ms. Bush, or no info? I was until, that because was I, I completely missed the 58 grams your honor that's okay so I'll, I'll release you sir on your own recognizance at this time what we're talking about here in open court is the officer in his um affidavit arrested you for possession of cannabis less than 20 grams which is a misdemeanor in the state of florida um, meaning the maximum punishment is one year in jail one year of probation or a thousand dollar fine the facts contained in the affidavit um the amount that he wrote is a felony amount so it's a difference in the charges so the state wants some time to clear that up to see what they might want to do in the meantime i'm going to release you on your own recognizance in this case you um, need to contact your lawyer within 24 hours of your release from the jail to make sure that they have your correct mailing address and that you appear at all court dates sir okay thank you thank you no i guess there's pc were you requesting the 24 hours still miss bush well, I was just going to say 24 hours, uh, but at this point, no. Okay. I'll just contact the agency. And okay. So that the right information goes to the office. Okay. Yeah, so just the PD, there's PC, and then ROI. Sir, good afternoon. Your name? Bobby McCree. Mr. McCree, sir. You are here in 20MM761. You were arrested for petty theft. 
there is probable cause, I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Is there an offer for Mr. McCree? Yes, Your Honor. The offer is being conveyed, understanding that he's out on release in 2019 CF 7079AO. It would be an adjudication of guilt, seven days Orange County Jail, two days credit time served, no return to the Walmart at 10500 West Colonial Drive, no contact with witnesses, abide by all trespass warnings and court costs. Mr. McCree, did you want to accept the offer? Yes, ma'am. All right. Did you have a chance to read the plea form before court? No. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You did. I'm okay. Sorry. Do you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving up? No, ma'am. Are you on probation? No, ma'am. Do you understand that if you're not a U.S. citizen that this plea will result in your deportation? Yes, ma'am. Are you under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication? No, ma'am. I'll accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to seven days in jail. You've got credit for two. You're not to return to the Walmart or have any contact with the witnesses or the victim. Yes, um, you are to abide by the trespass warning and pay court costs, which will be due by September 1st of 2021. You have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. I'm not going to revoke your release on your other case, sir. Thank, Thank you. Mr. Matos, I'm going to appoint your office to represent him. Would you like to waive his appearance? Yes, Your Honor. That's in 20 MM 6327. Mr. Taylor was arrested for trespass on property after warning. He's not to return to the sit go and abide by the trespass warning. Bond is $500, and I'm not going to take any action on the out on bond. Good afternoon, your name? Latina Young. Miss Young, you're here in 20 MM 6353. You were arrested for petty theft? Yes, ma'am. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Was there an offer for Miss Young? Yes, your honor, if I may I have I think just... she might be on probation, your honor. Is your probation terminated? Because there was a case with it. But if she says she's not, it's fine. Miss Young, are you on probation? No, ma'am. Okay. Were you interested in resolving your case today? Uh, if I resolve it, what will happen? Well, I'm waiting to hear the offer from the state. And your honor, if I may have just one moment, I'm trying to find. Yes, the offer would be an adjudication of guilt, five days Orange County Jail, two days credit, one day credit time served. Uh, no contact with witnesses, no return to the scene, which is the 7-Eleven at 901 South Orange Blossom Trail. Um, abide by all trespass warnings and restitution in the amount of $9.58. Ms. Young, did you want to accept the offer? If I accept the offer, I'll have to stay in jail. I won't be able to bond out. Right, but then your case would be over. I guess I accept it. Pardon me? Yeah. Which one? I'll accept it. Okay. Did you read the plea form before court? No, nobody came outside with it. All right. So that form that's there in front of you, that's the plea form. Can you take a look at that, please, and let me know if you have any questions when you finish reading it? Wait, you know, I, I don't want to take the plea. I'll just wait. All right. Your bond is $500, ma'am. It's 500 500 Oh, well, can I just take the plea because I don't have $500. I thought on the paperwork it said $250. Right, so you have failed to appear five times for court. So that's why your bond is the amount that it is. Uh-oh, $100? Okay, I'll get that. Yeah, you're on. Yeah, just take her bond. Okay, thank you, ma'am.
Yes. Good afternoon, your name? Juan Jackson. Mr. Jackson, sir, you were arrested in 20 MM 6258 pursuant to a probable cause warrant for battery. There is probable cause pursuant to the warrant. I'll appoint the public defender. You're not to have any contact with the victim. Um, oh, is that, is she here on this case? Yes. Okay. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hi. First of all, I need you to pull your, yep, and then I need you to speak into the microphone. Okay. Tell me your name, please. My name is Mia Harris. I can't hear you, ma'am. Mia Harris. Mia Harris? That's what she said. So, um, who's Aisha Brown? Well, the reason why I'm here because on the 27th when about this Aisha Brown, he was home with me. He never left. Oh. Okay. The house, he was home with me and my kids, so that's why I'm here. See why he in jail for something he didn't do. Okay, so you're going to have to speak to the state attorney about that or to his lawyer? Okay, ma'am? Okay. Thank you. Mr. Jackson, as I was stating, you're not to have any contact with uh, Ms. Brown. You are not to possess any weapons or firearms. And you're not to return to the scene, sir. Yes. Your bond is going to be $500. Thank you, sir. Medical, like she'll be back soon? No. No, okay. Mr. Montes, I'll appoint your office to represent um, her. Did you want to waive her appearance? Yes, Your Honor. All right, that's 20 MM 3390. She was arrested for failing to appear at arraignment on August 12th of this year. Her bond is $1,000, and I will not take any action on the out on bond. Good afternoon, your name? Walter Cabral, Jr., Your Honor. Yes, sir, you're here in 20 CO 690. You were arrested for soliciting without a permit. There is probable cause. Ms. Bush, is there an offer for Mr. Cabral? Yes, Your Honor, it's an adjudication of guilt. Two days Orange County Jail, two days credit time served and court costs. All right, Mr. Cabral, did you want to accept that offer? Oh, that means I'm done with it now, That's right? That's right. I'm, okay, yes, please, okay. please, please. <laughs> did you uh, read the plea form before court? Yes, I did, Your Honor, fully. Do you understand the constitutional rights you're giving up? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Are you on probation? No, Your Honor. Do you understand if you're not a U.S. citizen, this plea will result in your deportation? Yes, Your Honor. Are you under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication? No, Your Honor. I'll accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to two days in jail. You have credit for two days' time served. You'll have to pay court costs, which are due by September 1st of 2021. All right. You have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Oh, no action on the no action. No action on the out of bond. Is there an information? Hold on one second. Has an information been filed in that case, I wonder? I can't remember. I will find out, but I can't remember. Mr. Cabral, you're out on bond for a petty theft. Yes, Your Honor. 2020 MM. An information has not been filed, Your Honor. Hold on. I'm Mr. sorry. Mr. Cabral, just a second, please. An information has been filed, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Bush, did you want to make an offer on that case? If I may have just a moment. Sure. Mr. Cabral, did you want to resolve that case today while uh, you're here? Depending on. Yes, I'd like to. Okay. Just have one more thing to 
looks like they received the item back. Yes, they did. But that's what I was trying to find out because initially he refused to return to the store. He says, I observed the stolen item on the ground next to Cabral. I placed him in my vehicle. I don't know if And the state's offer would be an adjudication of guilt. And I'm also checking to make sure that he has no prior convictions. It would be an adjudication of guilt, five days Orange County Jail, and one moment, Your Honor. This is Mr. Cabral. Mr. Cabral, it looks like it would be time served because you were arrested on August 3rd and you bonded August 14th. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I will days. take that deal, Your Honor. Okay. Absolutely. And uh, there is a cost of investigation in the amount of $120.32 to the Orlando Police Department. No problem. And no contact with witnesses, no return to the Home Depot. And court costs, Your Honor. All right. This one's how many days do we have? 14 days. 14. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Mr. Cabral, again, we just did the plea colloquy on the other case. Yes. Do you have okay. any questions about the prior no. questions that I asked you? No, Your, Your Honor. Your responses would be the same? Yes. All right. And in 20 MM 5652, yes. I'm going to accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to 14 days in jail. You have credit for 14 days time served. You cannot return to the Home Depot and you must abide by the trespass warning. You're not to have any contact with the witnesses or the victim. You have to pay court costs, including the cost of investigation of $120.32 to um, the Orlando Police Department. And you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank I you, appreciate sir. it. Okay, we did Mr. Waters this morning. Good afternoon, sir. Your name? Matthew Basham. Mr. Basham, sir, you are here in case number 20 CF 10511. You were arrested for grand theft. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to return to the Home Depot, sir. And I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time. Thank you. Thank you. going to appoint the public defender's office to represent Mr. Blackman. Mr. Matos, do you want to waive his appearance? Yes, Your Honor. He's got two cases. I'll appoint the PD in both. 20 CF 10508, he was arrested for petty theft with two prior convictions. He's not returned to the scene. Bond is $1,000. And in 20 CF 10507, he was arrested for petty theft with two prior convictions. There's probable cause. He's not to return to the scene. Bond is five hundred dollars. Good afternoon, ma'am. Your name? Suleika Bruno Ponte. Ma'am, you're here in twenty CF one zero four nine nine. You were arrested for grand theft of a motor vehicle. There mm -hmm. is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to have any contact with the victim and your bond is a thousand dollars. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon, your name? Elvin Dwayne Carter. Mr. Carter, this is 20 CF 10497. You were arrested for burglary of a dwelling while wearing a mask, dealing in stolen property, and receiving money from a pawnbroker by false verification. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to return to the scene or have any contact with the victim. You are also not to go to any pawn shops. Bond on count one is going to be 2,500, bond on count two, 150, bond on count three, 150. Thank you, sir. Mr. 
Andy Fouts is medical. Your, your Honor, on uh, Mr. Carter, did the court have two cases before? Maybe I missed one. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carter's case again? Nope, I just had one. So was he already I-8 on 2020, 9159, anybody? Oh, no. Yeah. On Mr. Carter? It looks like he was Mr. 2020 CF 9159. Did he bond on that already? But he was seen. Okay, so he was already I-8. Okay, yes. all right. Ms. Fout is medical. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Matos, do you want to waive her appearance? Yes, Your Honor. I'll appoint the public defender if they weren't previously appointed in 19 CF 9937. She failed, she failed to appear for court. Bond on count one is 2,500. Bond on count two is 500 and in 19 cf 5556 she also failed to appear bond on count one is 5000 bond on count two is 2500 bond on count three is 500. all right i'll find a waiver of his appearance based upon his inability to come to court due to his behavior bond on uh, this is 20 CF 10522. He was arrested for possession of a controlled substance without a prescription, possession of drug paraphernalia, and altering or destroying uh, physical evidence. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender. Bond on count one is 1,000. Bond on count two is 100. Bond on count three is 150. He's not to possess or consume any controlled substances without a valid prescription. Good afternoon, ma'am. Your name? Heather Hall. Ms. Hall, you're here in 20 CF 10518. You were arrested for possession of a controlled substance without a valid prescription and possession of a controlled substance without a prescription. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Ms. Hall, are you going to be staying here in the Orlando area? I stay in Lake County, yes, ma'am. You where? Lake County. And you stay in Lake County. Okay. Yes, How long have you lived there? Um, I've lived in Florida for almost uh, my whole life. Okay. Um, as I said, I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to possess or consume any controlled substances without a valid prescription. You'll need to contact your lawyer within 24 hours of your release from the jail. And I am going to release you on your own recognizance at this time, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Your name? Travis Hall. Mr. Hall, you have several cases. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you in all of them this afternoon. Thank you. All right. You have 20, or you, I'm sorry, you have 18 CF 2889. You were arrested pursuant to a probable cause capius for robbery, grand theft, and burglary of a structure. Bond on count one is 500. Bond on, or I'm sorry, 5,000. Bond on count two is 150. Bond on count three is $150. You have 18 CF 3575. You were arrested for conspiracy to commit theft. Your bond is $1,000, sir.
There's 2018 CF 2457. You were arrested for burglar of an occupied structure, grand theft, third degree, and resisting merchandise recovery. Bond on count one is going to be $1,500. Bond on count two, 150. Bond on count three, 100. Just checking the consolidation numbers because it seems like they consolidated a bunch of different cases together. 7727. And then you've got 20 CF 7727. You were arrested pursuant to a probable cause order for grand theft, third degree. Your bond is going to be $2,500 in that case, sir. Did you want to take off the conditions on that one? Yeah, and all of the cases, sir, you're not to have any contact with the victim, and you're not to return to the scene. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. There's no. Okay? Thank you, sir. Hold on a second. Nine, eight, ten. So four. Wow. Your name? Oh, Harold. Mr. Harold, this is 20 CF 10346. You arrested pursuant to a probable cause capius for the offense of grand theft third degree. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to return to the Lowe's. And your bond, sir, is going to be $1,500. Thank you. And take off the no contact. Yeah, unless I said it, then yeah, you can take it off. It's not a problem. Good afternoon, your name? I'm Jeremiah Henry. Mr. Henry, you're here in 20 CF 10516. You were arrested for possession of fentanyl and possession of drug paraphernalia. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to possess or consume any controlled substances without a valid prescription. I'm going to place you in pretrial release at this time. Do you have a question? I'm not sure what, what, what I received. Or you're not sure what pretrial release is? No. So oh, okay. instead of posting a bond, you're going to be supervised in the community by a pretrial release officer. You're going to have to check in with them while your case is pending in the court okay. system. Okay? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Johnson, good afternoon. Dr. Noel, ma'am. This is case number 20 CF 10495. You arrested for petty theft with two prior convictions. Mm -hmm. There is probable cause. Um, I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to return to the 711. And I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time, sir. Okay, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Your name? Ronald King. What's your name? Ronald King. Mr. King. Sir, you have a few cases. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you in all of them. You've got 20 CF 10517. You were arrested for possession of cannabis greater than 20 grams in possession of drug paraphernalia. There is probable cause. Bond on count one is 1,000. Bond on count two is 100. And you have two out of county on view violations of probation out of Bay County. There's probable cause for both of the violations of probation based upon your arrest uh, in 20 CF 10517. Bond on the violations of probation will be set at none. I'm also revoking the bond in 20 CF 8009. That bond's going to be set at none. And then, Mr. King, you have reporting requirements when you are released from the jail, sir. Thank you. Thank you. 
whole time. Did Miss Smith Warther's bond? Two zero zero one nine one five eight. She bonded. Okay. Sir, good afternoon. Your name? Jeremiah Stokes. Mr. Stokes, you were here in 20 CF 8004. You were arrested for child abuse. This was pursuant to a probable cause warrant. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to have any contact with the victim. You are to abide by any DCF requests or investigations, sir. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. Can I say something? Just uh, a second. No. Your bond is $2,500. Mr. Stokes, I don't want you to say anything to me about the facts of your case. If you have a question about the procedure today, I'm happy to answer that for you. It's, it's important, though. It's about, the, it's about the kids. No contact with the victim and abide by any DCF requests or investigations. Your name? Dominique Williams. Mr. Williams, you are here in 19 CF 5496. This is a violation of probation based upon your arrest in 20 MM 6278. There is probable cause for the violation of probation. At this time, your bond will be set at none. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You're going to see Judge Whitehead in the next seven to 10 days. Seven to 10 days? Yes, sir. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, your name? Mustafa Howie. What is it? Mustafa Howie. Yep, I got it, thank you. Mr. Howie, you are here for an out of county warrant from Holt County for a violation of probation on a battery. At this time, sir, your bond is set at none. I'm going to appoint the Orange County Public Defender to represent you to coordinate with Holt County. We'll also reach out to Polk County to see if they'd like to make any modifications to your bond, and I'll bring you back to court once we receive a response. Okay, um, I actually was incarcerated for the VOP already, and I did the time actually on VOP, and I got a re uh, release date on last year on Christmas Day, and I was time served. I didn't get reinstated on probation or none of that, so I'm not understanding where the VOP where is. You, okay. I wish I had some more information for you. I don't have any access to the records in Polk County regarding your case. So that's why I'm going to get in touch with the judge in Polk County so that they can verify that information, sir, and they'll respond to me and let me know how they'd like me to proceed. Okay, um, if, if, I, if you don't mind, do you know how long that would usually take? It's usually not very long. So I will email them um, probably in the morning when we get the new list, and then they respond within a few days. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Your name? Leonard Redwood. Mr. Redwood, right. sir, you are here in. Oh, I need to call statewide. Yep. Okay. And, Your Honor, I also have a document if you need a document. I have the um, 
the exhibit. The probable cause documentation, right. yes. Thank you, Ms. Bush. Judge Carter, who am I speaking with? Uh, Your Honor, this is Jim Schneider. I'm an assistant statewide prosecutor in the Orlando Office of Statewide Prosecution. Good afternoon, Mr. Schneider. Uh, Good afternoon, Your Honor. This is 20 CF 10504. Sir, please tell me your name. Leonard Redwood. Mr. Redwood. Okay. Mr. Redwood, you were arrested pursuant to a warrant. And before I go further, it was brought to my attention this morning that... This is actually an Orange County case. It's been assigned now an Orange County case number, 20 CF 10504, although the caption on the warrant says uh, in the circuit court for Osceola County, Florida. Um, so I just wanted, Mr. Schneider, I don't know if you were aware of that. Uh, Ma'am, I was not aware of that. I've never seen this case file. To the extent it's possible under, under the circumstances, would it be appropriate for the state to move to amend the warrant to show Orange County, Florida, and the Ninth Judicial Circuit? Um, I believe that it would not to also include within the actual um, substance of the warrant. Um, it says that they brought the warrant before a judge of the Ninth Ju Judicial Circuit, which it is signed by Judge Strobridge. Um, and the allegations are alleged to have taken place in Orange, Osceola, and Duval counties. Right. So I think it, the fact that it's an Orange County case number, it, I think it's fine to reflect the change in the caption of the case. Mr. Mockers, did you want to be heard at all on that issue? No, no you're on. No. I don't okay. really know what's going on. Um, and again, Judge Strobridge is a judge in Osceola and Orange County. Um, Mr. Redwood, you were arrested for human tra trafficking for commercial sexual activity of a child under 18, deriving support from the proceeds of prostitution, and traveling to meet a minor along with forcing, compelling, or coercing another to become a prostitute, lewd or lascivious battery, transporting another for the purpose of prostitution, aiding or abetting for the purpose of prostitution, renting space to be used for lewdness, assignation, or prostitution, and unlawful use of a two-way communication device. Uh, Mr. Matos, did you want to reserve your client's right to have a full Arthur hearing downtown? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, so at this time, bond on count one is going to remain at none. Bond on count two will be set at 2,500. Bond on count three, 2,500. Bond on count four, 2,500. Bond on count five will be 5,000. Bond on count six will be 500. Bond on count seven, 500. Bond on count eight will be 1,000. And bond on count nine will be 1,500. Mr. Redwood, you are not to have any contact with any of the victims or witnesses that are listed within the probable cause affidavit. And you are not to have any contact with any uh, children under the age of 18. Mr. Schneider, is there anything else you'd like to add at this time? No, ma'am. Okay. Anything, Mr. Matos? No, All right. Mr. Uh, Redwood, as I stated, I previously stated your bonds. Your lawyer can file a bond motion in D Division 17 in front of the trial judge in that case, sir. Thank you. Here. Thank you, Mr. Schneider. Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Before Mr. Schneider hangs up. Yes. Uh, Mr. Schneider, this is Edith Bush with the State Attorney's Office. Um, do you wish the court to inquire whether or not Mr. Redwood has a passport? Uh, at this time, Your Honor, that strikes me as probably a very good idea, and I apologize for not having thought of it on my own. Thank you to the State Attorney. Sir, no problem. Mr. Redwood, do you uh, have a passport, sir? No, ma'am. No? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schneider. Have a nice day. Thank you, and thank you, State Attorney. Well, we have a good one. Right. Was that the last case? No. No, we have folks. I'm going to hang up then, Your Honor. Oh, yes, right. Mr. Schneider. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time, ma'am. Bye-bye. You're welcome. 
Did I give it to you back on accident? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Good afternoon. Your name? Al, Al Tooks, first Mr. name. Mr. Tooks, you're here for an out-of-county warrant. It's a writ of bodily attachment from Polk County. The purge amount is $4,500. Are you going to be able to pay the purge amount, sir? I can. It would be like, I don't know how long, but I can pay it. I just was supposed to do my fingerprinting for the IRS today, this morning at 830. Okay, but, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach out to Polk County to see if they want to release you from the purge and have you report to court in, in uh, Polk County. Roger. All right, as soon as I know that, they'll enter an order probably with you, with uh, authorizing your release and with a court date, sir. Roger. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? No? All right, then court will be in recess.